The molecule in front of you represents the energy storing compound glucose, the most abundant carbohydrate in nature and an important source of fuel for almost every animal and plant on Earth. With a chemical formula of C6H12O6, the molecule most commonly exists as shown with a hexagonal cyclic backbone containing five carbons and one oxygen and various molecules extending off the five carbon atoms, which we will describe in detail momentarily. However, a small percentage of glucose, from less than 1 to 3 percent depending on the local environment, can also exist in a linear form, and we're going to spend the next few minutes graphically demonstrating how the molecule changes its configuration from one form to the other. But first, let's review some basic chemistry. Glucose is made up of three atoms, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. Nitrogen has no role in glucose or other energy storing molecules like fat, but it is a vital component of structural and enzymatic proteins in the body, so for completeness we'll bring it into the list. Looking at our periodic table, the four atoms are all listed at the top of the table with hydrogen in column 1, carbon column 4, nitrogen column 5, and oxygen column 6. The column number corresponds to the number of valence electrons available for binding and, therefore, determines the chemical properties of each of the columns. The column all the way to the right are the noble gases, containing a complete array of valence electrons, two for helium and eight for all the rest, and therefore don't readily react with other elements on the table. All the other elements, however, want to combine with each other to attain that cherished noble status. As such, oxygen with its six valence electrons needs two more to be complete. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and needs three, carbon four valence electrons and needs four more, and finally hydrogen has one and needs one more to resemble its noble cousin, helium. Carbon, containing exactly half of the complete valence configuration of eight, affords its special status and has a rather unique ability to form either single bonds like in methane, double bonds in CO2, and even triple bonds as seen in hydrogen cyanide. With this multi-bond capability, carbon is considered the basic element of all living species on the planet Earth. Looking back at our cyclic glucose molecule, you can see that each element combines with its neighbor to complete its respective valence shell. With that in mind, let's break down the glucose molecule. Starting with the hexagonal backbone of one oxygen and five carbons, with the carbons numbered like this, also known as a pyrin ring. On carbon 3, we have a hydroxyl group on top and a hydrogen below. Carbon 2 has a hydroxyl on the bottom and a single hydrogen above. And carbon 1 similarly has a hydroxyl on the bottom and a single hydrogen above. Oxygen already has its requisite two connections and therefore doesn't need any side chains. Moving on to carbon 5, the top of the atom is actually attached to carbon 6 with the other three carbon 6 bonds occupied by two hydrogens and a hydroxyl group. Of course, a single hydrogen is attached to the bottom of carbon 5. Finally, carbon 4 has a hydroxyl group on the bottom and a single hydrogen on top, completing our glucose molecule. Now let's convert the cyclic molecule to its linear configuration. Removing the side chains, we have to disrupt the bond between carbon-1 and the adjacent oxygen molecule. Unfolding the ring, our carbon positions are listed as such. Restoring the side chains and rotating carbon-6 into the carbon line, we can see that carbon-1 and the oxygen on the bottom of carbon-5 are both missing one of their requisite bonds. To make everyone happy, the carbon-1 hydroxyl group is willing to give up its hydrogen atom and form a double bond to its carbon neighbor, and the released hydrogen now binds to the carbon-5 oxygen, completing the required bonding of all the linear glucose molecule atoms. The functional group on the linear chain is called an aldehyde, and therefore, with its six-carbon configuration, glucose is referred to as an aldohexose. To reform the cyclic form of the glucose, we would reverse the steps with the hydroxyl oxygen of carbon-5 attaching to the carbon-1 atom to reform the pyran ring. And that's it, the linear and cyclic forms of energy-storing glucose molecules. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.